I, I really like this term data intelligence. You know, we started off talking about a data management solution and data governance. I, I really, people oftentimes get confused. And this is one of the first things I want to say about best practices. If you're looking to implement uh, data governance or data catalog or data intelligence, you know, essentially if you're trying to help your organization use data better, right? There's a series of things to help you do that. Uh, um, it's important to really make sure that the terms that you use when you say, hey, we're doing a data governance initiative or we're doing, uh, we're gonna have a data catalog or a data dictionary or whatever. That that it's it's something that, that people understand and they understand what, what that means, and and I, I do find that these terminology can be confusing for people, and and so I like to think about data intelligence as the overall um, ability within an organization to have intelligence and information and knowledge uh, about your data, and and, um, and to cultivate that knowledge. And that really includes two things. It includes sort of a framework where you're for data governance where you are um, providing expertise and subject matter expertise and action on your um, uh, curation over uh, information around your data. And then actually all of the content and catalog information about, about your data. So it sort of combines those, those two things. So really, I, you know, it's a little bit easier for me to think about the governance as sort of the human aspect of this and the, uh, the catalog as sort of the, the content that you're that you're managing uh, about this, now, but you'll hear different sort of, of things, and it doesn't really matter if you use our language or not. But it's important within your organization that you define the language pretty clearly, uh, and, and make sure that everybody understands what what this is, because this overall concept, as you will see, is very broad. There's a lot to it, and it's very easy to get people um, misunderstanding that, you know, hey, we're doing a data governance initiative. I thought that was about security, uh, and someone's like, no, I thought it was about um, you know, uh, documenting business definitions, or I thought it was about, um, you know, making sure that people's requests are managed quickly or whatever. So, you know, all these different things are important to, to, to nail down. So within the framework, we talk about sort of three key things. First, you've got the people part of this. So a defined set of stewards and stewardship, it's providing subject matter expertise and decision makers over your, over the, over your data. Uh, and then governance oversight. So the people who are sort of leading the initiative, who are um, helping and supporting uh, governance and keeping things moving and monitoring uh, the, the overall information around your data. Uh, and the other sort of key part about a framework is having a, uh, a, a central repository or a sort of launching point for the content around your data um, and, and just so, I'm sure that many of you, if you're on this call, you probably understand the distinction between this, but we're not actually talking about the data in a repository. We're talking about the metadata, the information and about your, your data. You still might have you know, all sorts of data warehouses and, and, and transactional data systems and, and reporting tools and ETL processes where you've got actual data moving around, but this is a central place with, where someone can start to go find out all the information about uh, the different data systems and the different um, you know, processes and all that. That, that you have. So, and the important thing about this is that it should be sort of open to not just um, you know, DBAs and report writers and, and application developers and, and what we call creators of data, but also open to the consumers, you know, you people who are requesting reports and getting reports and looking at data and all that. So it's, and uh, you know, you can decide, we can talk about sort of what's what level of, of transparency is, but I always err on the side of transparency from a metadata standpoint so people can really understand what's there. So you've got within your framework a repository to store everything, you've got the people managing it. And then we talked about this concept of just-in-time data governance where you've got a series of processes uh, for managing content. Uh, and that really starts with points of entry. So uh, requests for new reports or change to reports or points of interest where someone can come to, to search the content or look things up, or report issues or ask questions, right? So points of entry into a process for, for people to, to interact when they have questions and then have that initiate a workflow for stewardship or curation activity, right? So maybe someone is you know, requesting a new report and you wanna specify the details of the report and assign a you know, privacy code to it or whatever you need to, to do or someone's reporting a data quality issue or, or telling you, hey, I just purchased a new data system. You know, but the point of entry where you can act upon that as, as needed through the stewardship workflow. And then additionally have automated points. So really this is sort of points of entry for 
uh, synchronizing automatically, you know, the information about your data system or whatever can be automated, you want to do that as much as, as, much as possible for, for content synchronization. But the main thing about the framework then is the people, the processes, and the repository. Now, what are you then governing? What are, the, you know, what are you storing in this? What, what are the people doing? What are the processes acting upon? That's this, where the content comes in. So this data intelligence or, or data governance content. 